it's Monica and I am going to show you one more trick to get your Facebook page looking really good and that is to make the entire div here, this box, purple, this light purple background or any background color you want that matches your sign up form. So the first thing I need to do is figure out what that color is. So over here in my Aweber, I'm on my design tab of the web forms, see? And then I just need to go to the body, make sure body is selected here, and the background. And I need this number right here. So go ahead and select it, copy it, and click cancel. Now you don't need to save this because um, you didn't make any changes. Go back to your composer. Now normally I would tell you to do this with a style sheet, but since we're going to go to Facebook, I'm going to tell you how to do it in line. Click anywhere in your div and go ahead and go to source again. I know, the big scary source. Now it's going to look something crazy like this, okay? What you're going to look for, and you can even do a search for it, but you're going to try to find, you got to find the ID that says ID right column, right here. So it should be somewhere a little above where you were, but this div, ID right column, is what you're looking for. Now we've got to edit the style. I know this is confusing, but just bear with me. We have to do a couple of things. First, we're going to set the background color, right? So it's background dash color colon pound sign and then paste that number and then semicolon. Now what that does is that tells the cascading style sheet to use the background color of that hex code. Okay? You gotta make sure to put the pound in there too because otherwise it doesn't like it. Okay, so now let's go preview it. Check it out. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so one more slight little problem and this is just because I'm nitpicky but see how this is up against this text? I don't like that. So there's two ways to handle this. You can either center these up here with the center button. Right? That's one way to do it. But I don't really like that either. So let's undo that. Let's push it. Let's give it a little padding is what we like to call it. Again, we've got to go back to our CSS. But inline. This is called inline CSS when you do it like this. And the reason that we're doing it like this is because of Facebook and the style sheets in Facebook. Technically, you can have a style sheet, but it's way more of a pain in the patootie, so we'll just do it this way. Okay, find your div again, your right column div. See it? Now, I'll put this code in the um, tutorial, but you've got to do two things. This width needs to be a little bit smaller, so we're going to make it 33%. Now, why we do that is because that gives it enough room to expand when we add a padding. So we're going to add a padding on the left hand side because that's where their text is. So padding dash left colon 4px semicolon. The semicolon tells it that it's done. By the way, that's a coding thing like, you know, this little tag here, this attribute is done. So now if we go preview it, see it's a little bit off. Now if you wanted to make that bigger, um, say 14, you could do that, although that probably will Oh no, it didn't. Sometimes it'll push the whole div down here. If you did that, uh, it just means it didn't have enough room in that percentage that we changed earlier. And I even kind of want to get it a little off the top, so let's do that real fast. And how we do that is after a semicolon, we write padding, top, um, I like 8 pixels for a lot of things. Okay, so, oh, and you'll notice our background color, color changed. Composer changes that into the RGB color for you automatically. So don't worry that this has changed. Let's go back to preview. That looks fantastic. Oh wait, except maybe I want to change these to match the rest. Let's just change this text. Make it a gray color again. You know how I like my gray colors. Oh no, that's too light. It just helps with the styling to make everything sort of look good. Um, you know, we can make it a little bit bigger. Oh, wait, I, didn't. I think it's got me selected on the thing. Sometimes this happens. Oh, I'll go to a totally different one, see if it works. Nope. This is what happens sometimes in Composer. When it does this, I just move on to a different tab. Oh no, it's not happy with me at all. When it does this, I really just close the file and reopen it. So, anyway, that's how you do it, and I hope that was helpful.